day again. You're all welcome to Legacy Queens. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, here is a ladies platform where we inspire or empower each other. And we have this call every Wednesday at exactly 8 p.m. My name is Bridget Archer and I'm your host for today. Yes, so today again, we have a beautiful lady who is going to talk to us on how to overcome our fear, okay? But before I introduce the, the speaker for today, last week we had uh, one of our queens who got married and then I want us to use this opportunity to congratulate her. Okay, so if you are here listening to me, you can hear me loud and clear. Kindly type congratulations, Mrs. Jima, or congratulations, Vera, or Princess Vera, however you call her. Kindly type in the uh, chat box for us, please. Congratulations. L let me see you congratulating her. Kindly type the congratulations, Mrs. Jima. She's now moved from the mess. I mean, the single, single and searching mood to now being a missus. So Mrs. Jima, Mrs. Vera, Queen Vera, however you want to put it. So Kylie type for us, please. She got married last week. And now she's in her honeymoon, enjoying with her <laughs> husband, okay? So Kylie type for congratulations for us, please. All right, all right. I'm seeing a lot of people typing. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Aziz. Thank you, Lodia. Thank you, GC. Thank you, Rookie. Yeah, she's here. Yeah, she's a A. Yes. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you all. So, yes, today is another Wednesday, just as we do it all the time. We have a guest who is um, coming to talk about how to overcome our fear. Her name is Aziz. Kaka Fatimatu, and then she's an educational psychologist, a French teacher, and an entrepreneur. So without wasting much time, today the call is going to be very short because most of us have other things we, we are doing. So we're trying as much as possible to make this call very short, okay? So without wasting much time, I would uh, like our guests to unmute and then show us her beautiful face as she brings us uh, today's talk, okay? So Fatima, are you there? Can you hear me, please? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So of can all you hear topics, me? yes, please, we can hear you. Okay. And we can see your beautiful face as well. <laughs> You're looking good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Of all topics, we chose today to talk about how to overcome uh, your fear. I know most of us have heard this a couple of times, but we believe it. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. Okay, so it looks like my network was bad. I don't know if it's from my side or your side. Mm -hmm. So, well, hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hello. Hello. Yes, please, we can hear you. Can you speak? Okay, so we are all welcome to another session here with the Legacy Queens. I'm super excited today. And we'll be talking about fear and how we need to make um, sure that our fears don't take the best part of us. So, you know, we all have fears in one way or the other. Um, we can name them. If you want to name our fears, I don't think we'll be ending this call. So some have fear of um, rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, yes. Even people fear that after success, what's next? So today, the question I want to ask is, what is fear? How do you understand fear? So 
Um, guys, you can keep your, your answers in the comment section. You can, you can type in the comment section and then we'll take it from there. So what is fear? How do you understand fear? When you hear the word fear, what comes, what comes to mind? Yeah. Yeah, guys, kindly type in the comment section what you know about fear, what you think fear is. You don't have to, your definition doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. Just give us what you know, what you think fear is, okay? So I'll go first. Um, personally, I did my research and then according to what I found, fear is a strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. That's basically how fear is. Yeah, that's also, to me, that's what fear yeah. is. That's the yeah, emotion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let me literally in the comment section if anyone has anything. Hey, I will mention names. <laughs> <laughs> I will mention, please, that's what fear is. We have MG, we have Evelyn, Georgina Wilson, Lodia, Mercedes, Rita, Rookie. Please, anything you know about fear? Anything you know about fear? Okay. All right, I think uh, we can move on with what you have. Okay, someone says, um, Someone says it's an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger, real or imagined. Someone is saying fear is dangerous, of course. What else do you think fear is, please? Um, we will take one more and then she, she can move on with yeah. her presentation. Fear can be exciting, low-key. Hey, JC, please. <laughs> Really? Elaborate. What do you mean by fear can be exciting, Loki? I is our who love to to feel. <laughs> Someone, Evelyn, Evelyn Stafford is saying it's a negative emotion about something. Yes, fear is the opposite of faith. Hey, shh. spiritus, <laughs> we here. <laughs> okay, so that that's from the biblical version. I think fear is the opposite of faith. <laughs> Okay, so I think you can you can go on with your presentation. Okay, all right. Thank you guys for your 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 contribution. So I want to quote from a motivator that I cherish so much. How she described fear. So she said, "Fear is projecting an illusion that you can that you have into your future so much that it paralyzes you in that moment." I'll say it again. She says, fear is projecting an illusion. Illusion, something that does not exist. You are just um, anticipating it. And that you project that illusion that you have into the future. The future is unknown. We don't know the future. But you are projecting that illusion into the future so much that it paralyzes you in the present state. So I'll take it again. I will elaborate on it with um, a few. Um, so you, 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 have, you want to do something and then you haven't even started doing it, but you uh, have please, already. Uh, please, can you hear can me? You, can you please help us with uh, the, the, finish, the reference, again. the person who quoted this so we Yes, can, uh, Lisa, yes. Lisa. I mean, the person who quoted this, the, Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can you okay? So I want to elaborate on this uh, definition. So, in my understanding, you want to do something. Let's say you want to start a business, and you are already anticipating that you will fail in the business, even though you've not started. But because you know somebody who has had that experience before. The person has started a business and the person failed. You are already projecting that 
which is not even in line with what you are starting to do, whether you, you are going to succeed or not. You've already started anticipating failure. So that is the, um, what I can say about her definition. So um, I, I want us to think through this. Looking at it, we all have uh, fears. Like I said, we have fear of, uh, um, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of rejection and all that. So we are looking at it. What causes those fears? Why, why, do, why do we get that feeling of fear, that fear feeling? So in my research, I realized that we, we, we get uh, fearful or we get afraid of things from our past experiences. Sometimes the experiences may not even be as directly, but of people that we know, or even articles that we read, or even we saw something on social media and then we believed it, depending on whoever uh, had that experience. So our past experiences can project fear on us. Another thing is anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. In, in, we, we don't have the ability to balance the emotion whenever we have to face something we are started. Mostly uh, fear comes or we get gripped by fear when we, we are starting something new. Sometimes we even have an idea about it, but because we've not had the experience or we know people who have already done it and then they failed, we, we anticipate and then we project that fear into, into our present state. And fear is, is, is natural. It's a natural feeling. It's, it's part of us. We cannot do away with fear. I remember um, the first time I, went, I wanted to, to learn how to drive. It wasn't easy. My conductor could even hit me and then he would apologize to me because I, what I hated to see was an oncoming vehicle. And then when that vehicle is that huge, like a trailer, a, a tipper truck. <laughs> I even want to take my hands yes. and legs off the brake and then the, the steering wheel. So he has to hit me and then draw my attention that if I take that hands off the, the steering wheel, we are all gonna die. You, you get it, okay. So that's, that's, that is it. And then I, I also want to ask another question. The next question I want to ask is, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you. Princess Vera says she can hear me. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. So yeah, we, um, now we know our fear. We know what fear is, and then we know what causes fear. I gave just two. I know we will, we will be having maybe another session on this because I want to meet the time. I don't want us to exceed that time. So the next question I wanna ask is, how do we mitigate or manage our fears? How, how do you deal with the fears? I think that is the main content of our topic for today. After, after the fears, how do we manage it? Like I said, everybody has fear, everybody, even, um, people who, who are experts in what they are doing at a point, they, they have fear. So how do we manage the fear or how do we mitigate it? So first of all, the first thing you need to know is identify your fears. What is your fear? Is it the fear of rejection? Is it the fear of success? Is it the fear of failure? Is it the fear of judgment? The fear of success sounds a little bit weird to us, but there is the fear of success. People are afraid of what will happen if they are successful because they know people who are successful. I know of someone in my community, he is successful. If people are going to get married, they go to him for, for money, not even loan. They go for money from him. Can you help me get married? So look at that irony. Someone wants to get married, but because he knows this person has enough, they go to them for help, which shouldn't be so. So people look at it and they anticipate, looking at like 
someone like me, I know of a person in my community who is facing all these uh, problems amidst his own family problems. Solving people have to name their, their walls, naming ceremony, they go to him. Someone's son is going to the university, they go to him a whole lot. <laughs> so looking at me, I have somebody like that in my community. If I want to, if, if, if I look at the person, I have the fear of success, that if I succeed, if I have so much, and you can't hide the, the, a success, when it comes, people know. You start to change a lot of things, your car, your house, the way you dress, all those things, they change. So it's, it's, it's very obvious to people. Uh -huh. So apparently, apparently, I look at someone like this, and then I have the fear of success. When you talk about the fear of success, people don't believe it, but it's there. So you have to know your fear. What's, 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 how can you define your fear? What kind of fear are you facing? What are you afraid of? So I gave a few examples of rejection, success, failure, judgment, and all that. People fear that um, they, they are rejected in, in, in a community. So they have to go by what others would like them to do in order for them to fit. So they can no longer be them. You, you can no longer be you because you, want, you don't want rejection. So if this person, if uh, you tolerating nonsense will, will give you a position in people's life, you go on to tolerate it. <laughs> please are we together on this? Yes, please. Okay, very good. And then people, people are afraid to fail. We, we, we all have to know that without failure, we cannot succeed. Okay, without failure, you would never succeed. People who are successful, if you talk to them, they have failed so many number of times that, that they have succeeded. So we, we cannot say that we are afraid to fail. It is, it is part of us. So fear, fear, fear is something that we cannot do without. Any, anything, any step that you want to take in your life, fear will be there staring in your face. So we have to prepare for fear. We cannot, we, we cannot do without, it. it's, like, it's like any other feeling. It's like um, excitement. It's like, so we just need to embrace fear. We, we cannot say, because I'm afraid. So if we keep on, um, if we keep on nurturing fear in our lives, we will never move on. We will never progress in life. Because any basic step that you want to take in your life, if you want to move to the next level, there is fear. Okay, so um, the first thing I talked about is, is, is to know the fear. Get connected with you, okay? Because there is an assessment. I'll say it again. If you can name the demons in your life, it is only there and then that you can eradicate them. So if you do not know the fear, if you do not know the fear in your life, there is no way you can overcome it or mitigate it or even manage it. Because you yourself, you, you, you cannot define your fear. Okay, uh -huh. so that is the first thing we should be looking at. Then secondly, we need to work towards managing our fears. And then with that, you, you need to project the possibility that the outcome of your fear can be positive and not always negative. So we have the what if syndrome. What if I, I start a business and I fail? What if I start this new relationship and I fail? Because you, you've seen people in relationship and they are, it's not working for them. So you've already anticipated the outcome that you, you, you are not going to succeed in the relationship. You are not going to succeed in the, in the uh, business. You are not going to succeed in your in your uh, cause to to uh, weight loss. Okay. So what what I want us to know today is that we need to we need to work towards managing the fears, and in that respect, we have to see the positive aspects of what our outcome when we overcome the fears. So you what if? So there are people who have succeeded in their relationship. Why don't you look at that? Why don't you see the brighter side? Why, is, why should it always be the, the negative side? There are people who have succeeded in their marriage. 
So why would you say that uh, maybe my auntie marriage and it, that, it, it did not work for her. So if I also get married, it will not work for me. Somebody started a pottery business, it didn't work for him. So if I start, it will not work for me. Why don't you see the other person who started that, that business and it worked for him or her? And it's, it's, it's been good for, for her or him or her. I'm using her because most of us here are ladies. Uh -huh. So why don't you look at that person who, who started the weight loss um, 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 journey and then it became successful for, for him or her? Why should it always be the negative? What if it doesn't work? What if no? We should start looking at the positive outcome of what our, 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 uh, our accents, not always the negative side. And again, on that same point, I want to, I want us to also uh, look at it in a way. Even if you, you should get the positive and negative, we have two hands. So we should get the negative and the positive in both hands. Look at the negative aspects. Look at the positive aspects. Be prepared for the two. Do not let the fear grip you uh, as much that you cannot go to the next. You don't even know what is at the other side of the fear. It could be brighter than you have ever imagined. So I want us to look at this point again, that we students always look at the negative uh, outcome of whatever we intend to do. No, we should also give energy to the positive outcome because wherever energy is, it, it grows. So please, let's, let us uh, uh, nurture our energy into positive outcomes. So in order to to overcome our fear, we have to look at positive outcomes of what we intend to do. I believe that point has been well um, digested. So that I move to the next point. Yes, I believe so too. <laughs> so the <laughs> next point is to get your affirmation. You, you, you should profess, you should profess your affirmation to yourself every day if it's possible profess to yourself please don't let people overshadow overshadow you with their 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 uh, uh, fear no so affirm to yourself tell yourself i am i am not afraid of rejection i am not afraid of failure i am not afraid of judgment tell your brain to accept it because whatever we feed our brain it it accepts it 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 embraces it it embraces it so we, we should we should embrace sorry we should feed our our brain with what positive affirmation don't don't let anybody dictate whatever for you if they did it and it's never worked for them that is why you are you you are not them we we all have our uniqueness there is no uh, bridges archer anywhere even if there is another bridge, bridges archer she's not like boss lady bridges archer uh -huh. of course. So, yes. <laughs> so we have our uniqueness. <laughs> Everybody has their uniqueness. That is why we all don't have the same fingerprints. It is unique. That is how our future is. Everybody has their uniqueness in creating their future. So you, you, you tell your mind, because the mind is desi designed in a way that it's always want to keep you safe. So you want to, you want to learn how to swim. Your mind will tell you, when you go into the pool, you will drown, <laughs> or you get drunk. <laughs> no, so you, you, like, to... <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to learn. You you want to learn a new skill that you know will will, will, will direct your life into uh, your growth. But your mind keeps it wants to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you you are looking at yourself. You you want to start a business. Your mind says no. When you put money there, you lose it then you listen to your mind. Start changing, start changing whatever your brain is protecting you against. Because mostly the, it's, 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 the brain is overprotective. That is why when there is, there is, it says we respond to stimuli. So when there is fire outbreak, your brain will tell you to run away from the fire because it always wants to keep you safe. That is how the brain is designed. But you have to redesign your brain. You have to tell your brain that no, you, you, you are depriving me of me going to the next level. I'm not going to listen to you. 
not all the time. Sometimes we need to listen to our brain. <laughs> but to this regard, <laughs> to, uh, facing our fear, yeah, we, we have to look at it in, in a way that we don't always let our brain tell us not to do. If only we know what we are going to do is positive. It's not going to have any negative uh, effects on anybody. And then it's all, even your action is going to have a better or a greater impact on other people if you take that action. So you are starting a business. Definitely, you are going to employ people into that business. It is going to have a positive impact on people. Okay, you want to start a relationship. You are going to be there for somebody in that relationship. If, if not at all, even start a family with that person. It is something positive. So please, let's not always be listening to our brain all the time. That I, I'm talking about that aspect of it projecting the fear in, in us. In, 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 in that respect, it is, it is keeping us safe. Uh -huh. So we don't always have to listen to our brain in that uh, effect. So I believe that point is, is also well uh, um, addressed. Because on that point, I also want to say that we, we need to, to bear our convictions with inconvenience. The brain doesn't like inconvenience. So in your quest to bet your convictions with inconvenience, your brain will be a barrier. It will be a stumbling block for you. It will tell you not to go there. Don't cross that bridge. But for all you know, everything that you need in life is just beyond that bridge or just beyond that barrier of your mindset. So uh, we, we, have to, we have to get inconvenient in order to bring out our, our convictions, our dreams, what, whatever we, we dream about. We, we, we need to get inconvenient before that rebirth can, can, can come to play. If not, we, we can never uh, um, see our dreams come true. If we always want to listen to our brain's, uh, uh, our brain's work of what? Keeping us safe. We are never going to get to the next level of our life. So I don't know if that point is well exhausted. I would like to move to the last point. Yes, it's time you move on. Okay, so the last point I want to touch on is that we need to realize that information, education, and developing your skill, your skill set can help you to what? Mitigate fear. So I, I, I talk about education, um, information, and then developing of your what? Your skill set. You have a fear of rejection. What have you done about it? Have you read? Have you got enough information? Have you read? Have you gone to the, the internet? Have you got someone who speaks about um, getting rid of that fear? Have you done any of that? So we, we, what I'm trying to say, this point is, is, is very necessary. If you know, like, you know you have fear of what failure, please read on books. By the end of this um, session, I'll give out a few books that can help us to overcome our fears. So, have you read, there are lots of motivational speakers and transformational speakers on the internet. It's free, YouTube, webness. Um, you, you follow them on Instagram, their social media handles. You, you get a lot of information. You, 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 you listen to their, their motivational, inspirational speaks, and then you, you know that after listening to them, if you are really paying attention and you are focused on overcoming that fear, or mitigating that fear, you, you move according to what they are saying, you follow them because it has worked. They, they are renowned, they are taking people through those courses for them to manage their fears. So you, you follow them, you know you are going to get what results. Have you read enough? What have you done? We, we, how hungry are you to overcome your, your fear? I don't know whatever fear that you have whether it's failure, it's of success, it's of rejection, there are lots of them. I don't know which one is yours. Have you taken the necessary step of information? What education have you got from outside? Of course, you have the fear, so you cannot help yourself. 
you can only help yourself by looking up to others, by looking up to books, getting information on how to what, uh, mitigate that fear. So like me, I, I, I had, I had the, the, um, the fear of failure. Anytime I want to start editing, I will be making references to people who have already failed. Never will I look at those who have, who, who have succeeded every day. And I always want to blame somebody. This person did that and then they didn't succeed and all those stuff, no. So growing up and then learning, I realized that no, if I want to overcome that fear of what? Fear of failure, I need to get people who have already overcome it or people who are teaching others on how to what? Overcome that fear. So that was what I started doing. I started listening to people. I started reading books. I started reading uh, journals. I started reading uh, um, articles. Articles that, that were on, or were talking about that fear, how to overcome the fear. And then all those articles, I realized that I'm not the first person who, is, who has that fear. There are lots of people who, who, who have already experienced that fear before me, even before my great grandparents. So from the beginning of this world, the, this world started with the word fear. Okay, so being here today, I want us to know that if we want to overcome that fear, the last point, please let's get enough information. Any, anyhow, anywhere, it can be like I said, trainings, webinars, reading of books, um, getting, um, getting a, even getting a mentor. If only the mentor can serve the purpose of you overcoming that fear, bingo is good. That person is good to go with. So maybe listening to that person helps you overcome fear. There are people who have fear in, in, in public speaking. They, they take their mic and they want to urinate on themselves. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> the first time I had to do a presentation, <laughs> It wasn't easy. So there were people in the hall. I was foretold. I knew I had to do a presentation, but it was the first time. And I hadn't practiced enough. So you can imagine. I messed up big time. And then <laughs> that day, you like I'm that. seriously, I took the mic and there were chills all over my body. I couldn't move. I started beating about the bush. I didn't even know what I was saying, but I was there. So after, after that training, nobody, I, I needn't anybody tell me that I messed up because I knew, and the painful aspect was that it was recorded. <laughs> there was an evidence of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I had the recording. My, my boss, after the training, he showed it to me. He wasn't laughing at me though, but, I was embarrassed. So I asked him, boss, I will never speak in front of anybody like this crowd again. He said, no, you do it. Lo and behold, the next week I was on the flyer. I was supposed to do that presentation. <laughs> My boss was daring me. And then I had to take it in good faith. So you know what I did? I started practicing. Sometimes I'll stand in front of my mirror take uh, my tooth, uh, my, how do we call it? My uh, hairbrush and then use it in a form of a microphone. Or maybe <laughs> sometimes I'll even use my toothbrush and then I'll, I'll use it as a microphone. Then that was what my boss told me to be doing. So I started, I'll use the mirror as my audience. Then he asked me to be recording myself <laughs> anytime that <laughs> I will be doing the presentation to the mirror. So I saw the mirror as my audience. I, I pictured them, I imagined them in the room, in my own room. So I'll be, looking, I'll be looking at the mirror and then I'll be talking, I'll be delivering, I'll be doing it and then I'll be recording it. So after doing this for a while, I'll sit down, look at it and then I'll know, pinpoint my mistakes where I had to say A, B, C, D and I didn't square, I shouldn't have said A, B, C, D, then I'll correct myself. So that was how I overcame that aspect. I'm even still on it, but every now and then I'm practicing it. 
and being consistent not even doing it in front of people, but doing it to myself. Even today, even now and then, I'm still doing it because I want to overcome it. And then overcoming fear should be a constant something. There should be consistency. You don't say that sometimes we, we have trainings and people will say, I've been on that training before, so I'll not be on it. No, you should be on it because uh, we all know psychology has it that the more you are practicing something, the more you are becoming perfect. So you don't say that um, you should always be a student. We should, we, should be, we should be learning. Even if you, you are the boss, at least you, you should be learning. Okay, so that is what I have to say on this point. And then on that same point, I also want to, to say that um, no, matter, no matter where, where we are and then no matter what aspect of our life that we, we are experiencing, fear is part of us. We cannot do away with fear, whether you like it or not. Look at you. There are women. I know of a woman here. She has given birth to nine, but her 10, she has 10 children. Actually, they were 11, and then one of them, uh, she lost one of them. The 10th child, that, the 11th child that she was going to give birth to, this woman was panicking. Somebody who has had the experience for 10 times old, she was panicking. Yeah. It wasn't her first time. Yeah. But she was so panicking. So, like I said, anytime you want to, you want to have an experience, your mind, your brain will be, will be telling you, don't do it. At the edge of it, it will tell you, no, fall back. Don't, don't go forward. Because your brain thinks it has to keep you safe. It has to keep you safe. In, in, in that respect of your brain keeping you safe, it is depriving you of what? Your things that you should experience in your life. So what I want to say on this point is that we, we, should, we should get more, more information. We, we should be willing to learn. We should be hungry for information. Not today, I'm talking about fear. So I'll, I'll sideline it uh, to that aspect. So I'm talking about fear. So we should get more information on fear. We should try to get educated on how to overcome our fear. We should also uh, develop skill sets on that will help us what overcome our fear. We, we shouldn't just relax and know that there is a brighter uh, um, future or yes, at the other side of fear. So we shouldn't just look at fear as, uh, we shouldn't just let fear not experience things that we, we, should, we, should, we should be experiencing now in our lives. If there, there, there is time for it and you have the desire for it, don't let fear be a, a barrier to you getting to that level of your life. So I think um, those are the few things that I'll be saying about um, getting rid or not really getting rid. We cannot get rid of our fear, mitigating or um, managing our fears. So these are the few points that I will, I will be touching. I don't know if I have enough time, um, boss lady, uh, Bridget, I don't know if I have enough time so that I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move on. Okay, yeah, I, I think uh, we have about 20 minutes. I have to take questions. Maybe if the questions are not much, then... Okay, all right. So um, the last thing, I want to end this training or this session with um, books uh, that little, can help. The little you have. Wow, I don't have, I've learned a lot on this book. Okay, so uh, before you participants so maybe they have questions they want to ask you okay, okay. so uh, please if you have any question you can type in the chat session so we can okay so gc is saying can we ask questions about all fears yeah i'll try my uh, best please can we ask questions about all fears? yeah okay. i'll try so my gc best. you can ask your question please okay so please can i answer to that I think he he wants to know, he or she wants to know 
before he yeah. asked so, uh, or she yeah, asked I want her. to tell her that yeah, she can. She can she can ask a question on any form of fear and I'll try okay, so my best. The person is saying this is saying how can I legitimately get over my fear of dogs? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um that is it that she uh, he or uh, is it a she or a he? I want to know. I don't know, but <laughs> okay, let me let me say she. so um if I don't know which aspects of the dog fearing she's targeting. Is it that the dog is wild and then it's all it's all bites her or it's I don't know. There are people who even fear dogs who are who are so fairy. They have so much fear on themselves and then uh -huh. so I don't know which which aspects of the fear of dogs that she's coming up with but if i understand maybe she she fears dogs that are wild she fears that uh dogs will attack her or anything i don't know but if that is it i will say that <laughs> if, <laughs> if 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 you if you know you are afraid of wild dogs i think you should avoid them in my own way exactly. you them close to them yeah if, because there are houses you are entering, it is pasted over there. Beware of wild dogs. It means yeah. if that dog gets grip of you, it's not going to let you go. It might even kill you before any member of that house comes out to rescue you. So you don't even have to get close to dogs. Uh -huh. I don't I don't know if she also wants to get a dog as a pet or I don't know. <laughs> so she can come clearer so that I, I will know how to go about it. Okay, so that, that's uh, the, your answer. And then Richard Diamonds is saying, so if I fear cats, I should stay away from mm -hmm. them. <laughs> yeah. I believe okay. that's what she meant. I, I, on that note, I, I believe you are trying to say that not all fears can be managed. If you are saying yes. uh, we should get rid of them, we should go away from them if we think they are going to bite us. So I try yeah. to say not all fears can be managed. Some you have yes. to avoid. Not all fears. I took the topic and then it had to be on the on the flyer. But uh, in my research, <laughs> I realized that fear, yeah, fear can only be managed or mitigated. You cannot get rid of it or overcome it. So you have to manage it. <laughs> if you want a cat as a pet, you need to get the cat whilst it's, it's a kitten and then you you train it you nurture it it gets used to you so you don't you don't need to get afraid of it anymore because it's not going to harm you likewise a dog uh -huh. that's why i said they should come clearer with their fear of the dog and the cat that is how i am what is that like a <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, Fulera is saying, how can I handle fear of going live on social media? I okay. always become speechless. Hey, Fulera. On social media, wow. This one is a whole topic altogether. <laughs> but let me, let me talk about it a bit. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, you, you, you have fear in going on social media. Maybe social media live, that should be it. Because if it's not live, it means you've done it without anybody looking at you where you are posting. But live means people are in your presence. Whatever you are delivering, people will be getting to you. So if that is it, like I said, you know your fear. The first point I gave is that you should be able to identify your fear. So you have been able, you have defined the fear. You know that your fear is what? Going on social media live. So you have, you have identified the fear. And then you have identified your demon. So you are now ready to eradicate it. So secondly, you are going to work on how to manage that fear. You should know that the first uh, social media life that you are going to go, mostly it, it doesn't end well. We mess up. It doesn't also mean you shouldn't, because there should be a first before a second, a third, a hundred thousand. If you don't take the first step, you are not going to get to that level. So 
um miss pulera i'll i'll be i'll tell you that look at it in the positive way what if i go to this social media live and i have like thousand people joining me like they get on board of my social media life for the first time it's it might not be so but i'm just saying it looking at the positive side of it and then the second thing is that the next point is that you have to work on you have to work on what educate yourself on going on social media live you have to get more information please can you guys hear me Okay, thank you, Princess Verafi. So, you want to go on social media live? Can you write? I'm I'm looking at it in the classroom because I'm an educationist. So, can you write a test without preparing? You you your preparation might not even be enough, but at least you have to make a preparation towards that exam. So you facing your fear, you facing your fear is like writing an exam. You, you have to prepare towards that exam. You have to face it. No matter what, you have to face it. So going on social media live, some of us, we don't even know that we have to get a, a, a good camera. We have to look at the background because people will join and they will know, they will see it from wherever they are joining, they will know this is where you are standing to make that uh, um, uh, live call or social media live something. So what training have you got? What education have you got? What have you acquired? That is making you uh, think that you can go on social media. You might not be perfect. There is nothing like perfection. Hello guys, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. So, like I was saying, you, 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 cannot, you cannot just start something that you don't have any knowledge on. I teach French. I started doing French when I was in KG because part of my family are Francophones. Though I wasn't born in a French country, but that affected us in a way. So my father and in fact, my father is the only person who is in Ghana. All his other siblings, most of them, about 70% of them are in Francophone countries. So we had that passion for the French. I started learning it from um, um, KG throughout JHS and then SHS. I went to college, I did French. I went to university, UCC, I did French. I mastered French, so that is what I do. I even have lessons on that. So looking at me, how can I deliver something in French without me having any knowledge? So my, the bottom line is that you have to at least have a little bit of what um, skill set if you want to do something. Like your question was about going on social media. At least learn from people who have who have already made it overcome that fear of going on that social media. They have had enough information on how to overcome that fear and they are doing it and doing it um, at its best. So I think that would be the answer to my question, Ms. Fuller. I don't know if you've, you've been answered. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys. I had a bit of a network glitch. Yeah. But I'm back. <laughs> Welcome. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, so um because I lost you guys, I, I don't know. I don't know where where you got to. Can you okay. can you please I was, uh, I was, I was asking, help me with yeah, yeah. I I I was answering to Miss Fuller's question on social media. She said she had the fear when she has fear anytime she goes to social media. And I think it's when she's going on social media live. Uh -huh, because if it's a picture that you are posting, I think you don't I have saw another question. Yeah. 
Um, I think before my next week, uh, some, I think someone called me. That's why I had that. I saw a question from GC. He was he or she was saying something, but I've lost the question from the, my chat box. So if you can. Okay, so Gina, Gina was saying that she her issue is she has dogs everywhere. And when she goes to people, the dogs try to play with her, but she doesn't want them to come near her breathing the same air as she is. So what can <laughs> she do to overcome? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. For me, I think, I think <laughs> if that's the thing, you just have to avoid dogs. Yeah, or oh, maybe you don't go where like... No, but I think I was I was I was having the same issue as her. I was say having the same issue. So in her case, it has nothing to do with whether it's um um a calm dog or a wild dog. She's just scared of okay. dogs, whether it's calm okay. or not. Yes. So okay. in my case, in my case, I had a similar issue. Right? I had a similar challenge with dogs. I just didn't like them, but then. Like um, when I visit people who have those small ones, I, I try, you know, I try to I'll stay calm, pretend I'm okay. And then they come close, they try to lick you and all those things. I try to give them a chance, but then I realize that I'm not a dog person. <laughs> the, the way they have their tongue all over me and all <laughs> those things. I, I don't like it. Okay. I, I, I know that I'm a cat person. So I think, you know, Gina should try, give them a chance. She, some people do that and, and they fall in love with dogs yeah. and all those things. They, they want dog pets. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But she will never know until she gives a calm one, like those cute, cute ones, an opportunity to come near her. If she's okay with them, then fine. But if she's like me, that she still doesn't want them, <laughs> then that's it. <laughs> okay. So adding on to uh, Boss Lady Vera's own, I have an experience like with the cat. Um, with the cat, uh, sorry, the dog, the dog issue. When I went to school, where my hostel, where I was staying and then going for lectures, there were these bulldogs over there. And then the landlord had them there to protect the house. There was nothing we could do. The only thing we could do was to get familiar with these dogs. So he, he taught us, yes, he taught us how to get closer to the dogs. If we, we really wanted them uh, to, to, to familiarize with us, we needed to uh, do something that would get them to us. So, you know, he said, anytime we are coming from town, we should buy meat or fish, something that they would like to take hey. and give it to them. Yes. So it's not, yeah, we, people, you it. it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime we are coming back from lectures, we will buy meat <laughs> or fish, not anything huge, but you know, dogs like fish and meat. So we buy it and then we give it to them. After they've taken their fish or their meat, you see them sniffing you. So they, he told us that they sniffing us men that they wanted to get our scent. I don't know how true it is. He said dogs have that, uh, um, that thing that when they sneak yeah. you, they, they can identify you by your scent. So if they, we, we, they get to know us by our scent, anytime we come around, they will not do anything to us. And that was how we, we got along with those dogs. Uh -huh. I don't know if that will help <laughs> GC or, yeah. GC, please. <laughs> I hope your, your question has been answered. <laughs> <laughs> Please, do we have any more questions? Any more questions? Because we are almost uh, coming to an end. But I also wanted to touch more on the, the last point where you said education, information, and developing your skill sets to overcome our fears. You know, I like that point because uh, we, uh, what you feed your mind, okay, is what, is someone saying something? <laughs> GC. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me please yeah i can okay 
So uh, I was saying that I like that point very much because we need to be careful of what we feed our minds, okay? Uh, you realize that uh, over, over the weeks uh, uh, before, previous weeks, you've, you've seen people posting a lot about, I, I've seen this uh, fear of relationship thing all over social media. Even today, I saw one on TikTok where a lady was saying the, the way people are describing this relationship and marriage thing, she's even scared to, you know. And then uh, that takes me back to the point where you made that there are negative side and then the positive side and we should focus on the fact that some people have actually done it and has succeeded in it. So um, I, I also want to say that what we feed our minds is very important. Because you go to the media, you see um, a lot of people complaining about something, okay? Sure. So instead of you sure. listening to more of that, especially with this song, uh, trending song, or oh, we all like it, the song is nice, especially the person who sang it has a very beautiful voice, adulthood, nah, scam, blah, 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 and all that. I, to me, I feel it kind of puts fear in people, okay? Yeah. Especially if someone, someone is in GHS listening to this song. Okay. She, what, what are you trying to tell the person? What are you trying to tell the person? Okay. We, the have, person and then, grow. We, have, we have a lot of people who have uh, different ways of handling it. Okay. Uh, there, there are limits to how much people can take in something. Okay. I, I know uh, personally, I've had a friend who couldn't take in too much of pain and decided to, I mean, end her life. Luckily for her, I went, I was the first person to, to meet her and then we were able to rush her to the hospital. So, you know, the kind of information you feed your mind is very necessary. It's very, very important. You go to the media, you see people talking about relationship, it's bad, it's ending like this. Uh, hey, I'm not going back to my ex-boyfriend, all that, okay. I'm not saying you, you are not going to see them. Definitely you are going to see them. But what yeah. are you doing about it? How are you reacting to it? Are you going to go ahead and listen to them and then accept that that is what it is? Okay, everywhere. Or you can just, you see something there. You can just go online, Google something, successful marriage, marriage tips or something, and then try and, I mean, feed your mind with the positive aspects of it, okay? So I, personally, I like the last point, the education and developing skill sets to overcome. You need to feed your mind with the positive aspects of something you've been seeing or reading or listening in order to, I mean, give positive uh, results. Just like she said, that you need to project the outcome to be positive instead of it being negative. So if you're always going to listen to that. Adult is, is a scam, marriage is, is a scam and all of that, okay? What are you doing to your life? Are you just going to live your life like there's nothing at stake? Definitely you are going to marry. Definitely you are going to grow into an adult. Definitely you are going to grow into a successful man. So try and read how to manage it, how to, I mean, go about it, okay? rather than sitting there and listening to, because the same people who are posting it are projecting it. <laughs> but you know, but you know, they are working towards it. Someone I know on this call, I don't want to mention names. Even a day before the wedding, she was posting that marriage is a scam. <laughs> this, this, and that. But at exactly. the end of the day, they got married. <laughs> okay. So don't listen to, <laughs> don't listen to, uh, don't feed your mind with the, post, uh, I mean, the more of the negative, try and out, outweigh the positive and then, okay, and then feed your mind with more of the positive than the negative, okay? So if you see something on the media and it says, no, uh, this is bad, this is this, this is this, try and, and then Google or try and ask around, what are the positive things I'm going to get if, if I go into this? You realize that for, you know, the, the positive ones even outweighs the negative. Okay, so what we feed our mind is very important. Okay, so if you have any more questions, kindly ask, and then I'll give I'll give room for two more questions, and then we bring this call to an end. Unfortunately. <laughs>
<laughs> Let me see if I can read some of the chat. The interesting chat. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so Fulera is saying, not that you lack vocabularies, but you mess up when you are given the chance to talk. That one there, it's true. It happens. It happens a lot. <laughs> me, the first time I, let me share my experience. The first time I spoke in public was when I was around age 17. Please, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I was around age 16, 17, 18. I was a Catholic then. So... You know, colleagues, we have something we call, some group of people, we call them lectors. Those are the people who go, and you know how Catholic church, the number of people who even come for the first service, number of people. So I was one of the lectors. And it's not as if I was forced to be a lector. Okay. So we call them lectors, but then you can also call them Bible readers. Okay. So I wasn't forced. I just saw it to be something that is nice. And then I realized that there were no younger people there were no youths in that lecture group. It was only old men. <laughs> so I it, I, it was nice for me. I decided to join, I went to see them. And the first time I read the Bible, the feedbacks I got from my friends were very funny. They said I was shaky, you know, and then it's always happens. It's always happens. You, you can do it 99 times, even the hundredth time you still have this fear or, so just as, um, yeah. Fatima said, you have to know that it is a part of you. But I realized that the more you are reading, let's say if you start from the first sentence, say, by the time you get to the third sentence, you are okay with it and you are reading. Okay. <laughs> and then when it comes to public speaking, uh, I, would, I would advise that when you are speaking in public, especially when the crowd is very huge, even if they are small, you still face such problems. So you try not to you know, you have to give eye contact, all right. But then what I was doing was, <laughs> you see the crowd is this way. I don't look at this part, uh, person's face or this person. My face is up there. You <laughs> see me raising my eye, you know, my eyeballs, but then I'm not looking at anybody. Because the yeah. moment you go and look at somebody, maybe your friend is sitting there <laughs> taking pictures of you, you laugh. <laughs> you get confused. Yeah. So with this, speaking, with this public speaking thing, you have to, you just have to keep on practicing. Just as you said, uh, developing your skill sets. You have to develop it. You have to keep practicing. Pr practice uh, makes perfect, okay? So yeah. the more you practice, the more you practice, then you become perfect. Just as uh, Fatima gave her, her uh, experience, <laughs> you'll be in your room. Sometimes yeah. you'll be in your room and then, especially when you have an event, you are going to talk. You'll be in your room. I don't know if it has happened to anyone. And then you practice it and going up and down, just like she said. Sometimes we use our remote, our brushes. Okay. So you have to practice. And then I think um, the first time I spoke internationally, another experience, it was on that one was even a Facebook Live. Yeah, it was a Facebook Live, a, a, a group of women. And then it was to um, Princess Vera. Hey, sorry, Message Jima, that I was able to. to uh, <laughs> post that call. And then I was scared. I was always telling her, I don't want to do this. I'm scared. Oh, hey, Charlie, what's up? And she was like, do it, do it, do it, do it. And then when I started the thing, you know, I even I realized that what I even jotted down to say, I was I was saying more. I was saying more. Because it got to uh, when it got to the middle of it, I realized now I can flow. Later when I asked her, she kept tell me. <laughs> after saying it, did you die? Okay, so you didn't die. So the more you practice, the more you practice, you become perfect. Okay, and then my first point was try and then feed your your brain with positivity because you know that your brain is going to protect you. So try and feed your brains with positive things. Not all things you see on the media you have to listen to. Of course, it, it, it you are going to see it. You can't keep your eyes off it. You are going to see it. You are going to read them. You are going to, the moment you see it, like your brain starts telling you something. So if you try and affirm positive things to the brain, you can overcome it. Okay. So if we have any more questions, um, let me see from the chat. Okay. Someone is saying message G. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> as it's the same, still a princess. 
Hey, for how you know, you, you are saying she's still a queen. Maybe she's now a queen. How will you know? She's now a queen. She has moved from princess, princess to, to queen. queen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, Fatima, we would like to have your last words and then okay. we, we end the call for today. Okay, very uh, good. That's awesome. Boss lady, uh, um, Acha said her lot. She even spoke more than myself. <laughs> and I loved it. I was also making notes out of what she was saying. So what I would like to end this session with is a few books, about three books that will help us to overcome our fears in any form, whether it is rejection, failure, judgment, name them. So the first book I'll be, I'll be naming is Feeling Good. Feeling Good by David Burns. David Burns, B-U-R-N-S. Yeah, Feeling Good. Yeah, so that book is good. It's good. It helps a lot in... Um, I had the audio part of it. I don't really have the hard copy, but I think it's good. Then the second book is When Panic Attacks. When Panic Attacks, that's the title of the book. And this is by the same author, David Burns. Yeah. When panic attacks. Okay. And then the last book I would talk about is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. That's the title of the book. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. It's, it's a book. Everybody needs to get that book. Yeah. It, it's really targets, the bottom line of the whole book is that in order, in, in order to uh, overcome your fear or mitigate your fear or manage your fear, just do it. Whatever, you, if, if it's the fear of rejection, get rejected. That is just the bottom line of what the book has. So that, these are the three books, okay. Feeling Good, When Panic Attacks, and then Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. So I think that would be my last words on this session. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. We've had a wonderful <laughs> view. We've, we've learned so much. Frankly, we've learned so much. And personally, I would say this is one of my best calls uh, ever since I started hosting. This is one Great. of my best. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. We've really learned, learned a lot. Wow. This session, I've re personally, I've learned a lot. You know, we've been seeing overcoming fears, overcoming fears. But then I, before we started, I thought maybe you're going to say some of the things we we already know. But then you've given us something new, something new that we've not heard before, and then we are very grateful. Yeah. So, guys, <laughs> see you all next week, same time. Kindly do advise your friends to join. And then for the new ones, you are welcome to Legacy Queens. If any of your friends invited you to join this call, kindly talk to them. We have a, a WhatsApp page if you want to join. Or if you want, if you also have something you want to share, you can text your friend or DM any of the people, uh, the, the admins in the group, and then we would, we would host you so you can also share what you have with us. Thank you all. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Nah, 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 my brother. I'm going in. Go to lunch. Yo!